The Cannon Fire Podcast is powered by PewterReport.com. Pewter Report prides itself on being the most complete, comprehensive news source covering the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and delivering inside scoop on the team found nowhere else. If you want to be the first to read about breaking news on the Bucks, the inside scoop on what's really going on in one buck place, and want more in-depth coverage and unmatched draft reporting than other sources offer, you've come to the right place. PewterReport.com, the official partner of the Cannon Fire Podcast. Yeah, big nasty Hall of Fame Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan, baby. Cannon Fire Podcast, brother. If you ain't watching, you ain't listening, and you're missing out. Woo! It is first down and goal from the five-yard line. Pass toward the end zone. Fade round. Todd ball. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Mike Caleb's. Bucks lead six and up. Again, fire those cannons. Six times. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a brand new episode of the Cannon Fire Podcast here on YouTube and iTunes for episode 25. 25 episodes of the Cannon Fire Podcast. Now, that might not seem like a lot, and to many people, it doesn't seem like a lot of content, but you got to think about it this way, and I was thinking about it this way when I was driving home from work today. We have been doing this show for almost a year. And I mean, it was around this time last year that, that we started to get back into into the idea of doing a sports podcast and finding the audience for it. And that's when we came up with the Cannon Fire podcast. It hasn't been a full year yet, and we'll figure out that date at, at, a, at a later time. But it's been a hell of a first year, man. Thank you guys so much. 25 episodes. And for episode 25, it is fan choice. We will jump into that a little bit later. But thank you so much for listening here on YouTube and iTunes. I am your host, Rhett. Joined alongside me, as always, my buddy, Mr. Bucks Football, Evan. You can find him on Instagram, at Bucks Football, the number one Bucks fan page on Instagram. Powered by our partners at Pewter Report. That was a mouthful. Evan, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm, I'm doing awesome. I, I mean, we kind of have to explain to the people why we've been gone for so long. Um, you know, there's all of, there's all of so many excuses you can throw at them, but it, it's been the off season. News has been slow and, and scheduling conflicts have really gotten the best of us these past couple of days. Uh, but what a time to, to record and, and throw everything out on the table as the schedule did just come out and man, we've got a lot to talk about. I mean, <laughs> We have got a lot to talk about, but some of the things that have happened while we were gone, we have inched a little bit closer to the draft. A lot more rumors have come out, and we will talk about that a little bit later in the show as well. But something something near and dear to my heart, something that I had to touch on, the death of the Thursday Night Football Color Rush uniforms. I, I used the picture of Jameis in the Color Rush uniform as our show uh, picture, and... It makes me upset because I just got a color rush. Uh, I just got a color rush jersey this off season, and now I have to retire it. And I haven't even worn it to any games yet, so I guess it's invalid now. But I like the color rush jerseys, man. They look slick. I actually, I, I, I think there's there's a chance that you might see it one more time this year. You think? What What are the circumstances? Are you thinking like a Monday night game? Are you thinking j- just a, a special game to use as a gimmick or? Yeah, I'm thinking Monday night versus Pittsburgh, maybe, um, possibly um, late in the year uh, versus the Falcons if there's a big game. Uh, you know, during the big games, they they paint the end zones red and stuff. So um, that makes sense. I mean, I think it would it would make a lot of sense. So I don't think I think the Bucks like their color rush jerseys. I think a lot of the fans do. So I don't think this is the end of the color rush jersey. It may not be the end, but they definitely won't be it, as uh, shoved down our throats, huh? It is the end of the word color rush, basically. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if we use them as an alternate a couple of times a season. You know how Philly has the blackout uniforms, a couple of other teams have the alternates they wear. I don't mind the color rush. If they can find a way to incorporate it and keep it around, it's a solid jersey, uh, it's a solid jersey design, and I think it's probably the best thing to come out 
of our rebranded look since a couple of years ago. I but, still want a pewter one. Uh, a pewter one? Yeah. I, I, I had seen I, the... I, I dig a black jersey. I, I really like black football jerseys. And I just think a pewter one would look, I mean, pretty good. Good. Not the pewter they used to have on the old uniforms. That was a bit of no, a lighter the, pewter. The this new, is a bit of like, a gray darker. one, right? Yeah, it's almost like a gray, almost like a dark gray slash pewter. I think that would look really good with like white numbers. Uh, yeah, I, I think it would look it would look very nice. There were a couple of Instagram pages I had seen. They they did some mock up um, some mock up color rush. I'm sure you had seen them floating around too. But one of them was all orange. I, I wasn't a huge fan of that. But there was another one that stuck out to me, and it was. White on white, uh, white white jersey, white pants, and it had the red numbers in it. And with the style of numbers we have, I, I like our away jerseys. I had kind of, I had kind of talked crap about the uh, the alarm clock numbers before, but in certain colors, like on our away jersey and the red, oh, they look tight, man. And that color rush was pretty cool. But rest in peace, color rush. Uh, we'll see you again, maybe, probably not, because it was more of a more of a marketing ploy to get people to watch Thursday night football, which isn't going to be happening. But anyways, we are here right now before we jump into fan choice and everything else going on. Let's talk about the schedule that dropped today. And it's a little bit after it's, it's nine o'clock right now. So the schedule officially dropped an hour ago, but I'd say four around three, four o'clock. Our boy over at pewter report, Trevor Sycama. Uh, he did leak the full buck schedule weeks one through 17 and we're going to break that down game by game right now. We're not going to get too in-depth about it. We're just going to tell you guys the game. It's open for interpretation. And when we do our season predictions show, which should be coming up soon, we will talk about that. So let me find the picture here of the schedule. Week one is going to be against New Orleans. And before we talk about that, did you actually see what the uh, the SB Nation affiliate for New Orleans, the headline of, of that uh that that story was yeah yeah i did and you know it's just going to be 10 times better when the bucks go in and beat them so yeah really okay so let's break this down week one is going to be the bucks playing the saints in new orleans week two versus the eagles week four, week three versus the steelers week four versus the bears we uh, taking a look at the first three weeks of the season it's going to be it's going to be a challenge, and we're really going to get to see what this team is made of right out of the gate. Now, obviously, this is a team the past couple of years who really hasn't come around until the second half of the season. So I'll be honest with you, I'm not I'm not expecting the worst, but I'm not expecting to come out and go 3-0. and We'll put it that way. It's it, When you take a look at this schedule, I, I'm kind of expecting it to be another year. We had talked about it last year. The first half of this season is really not going to look that great on paper once you hit week six, week seven, and you look at the Bucks' record at that time. Yeah, it's, you know, I mean, the schedulers didn't do any favors for the Bucks the first three games. I mean, Fourth toughest schedule getting... in the league this year, by the way. Yeah, the, I mean, well, that that has nothing. That's just bad luck, you know. I mean, with the Bucks, the, the division they play, the, the in-division opponents they play, that kind of stuff, that's just, that's just bad luck. That has no nothing to do with the NFL, it's just how it goes, um, but I mean, you know, you're playing three teams that made the playoffs, you know, uh, one of these teams is the Super Bowl champion, uh, you know, the other team both won a, a playoff game, the The Saints won a playoff game, and probably honestly should have beaten the Vikings if it wasn't for a miracle play at the end, <laughs> um, and, you know, the, the Steelers barely lost to the Jaguars, and I mean, some would say they were better. The Steelers were better than the Patriots last year. So, uh, yeah, they got it's, beat it's on the not, flute catch. I remember that game. I was watching that with my girlfriend. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be easy. One, one little bit. I, I mean, you know. So, but that nothing is easy in the NFL. Um, you know, but also you don't know how good or bad these teams are going to be. Um, you know, so it, it's tough to really say. You know, oh, this is going to be a blowout and stuff like that. Because you don't know. The Bucks could come out on fire. Right. You know, you know the, the Eagles could start off slow. You don't know. So um, you don't know how these teams are going to mesh together. Um, you don't know if they're going to, you know, injuries could happen, preseason injuries. The Dolphins, I mean, the Dolphins were really hurt by injuries early on in the season. Um, I think that hurt their season. But, yeah, 
yeah, it's it's definitely not easy, but nothing really is in the NFL. All right, so moving on, week five is going to be a bye week for the Bucks. We actually get one of those this year. Well, you know what I mean. Well, I mean, I, I think <laughs> – I, I, I was, I was pretty confident they were going to schedule the Bucks on the road week one um, because I didn't think the NFL wanted another hurricane happening. Um, so I, <laughs> I didn't think they wanted it anywhere near Florida. Um, All right. So, so I, I'm pretty, I was pretty confident that it was going to be an away game. So. Oh, yeah. Take a sip of my water there. Hope you didn't hear that. Um, uh, week five is going to be a bye week. Week six. They're going to be on the road playing division rivals, the Atlanta Falcons. Week 7 versus the Cleveland Browns at home. Week 8 is going to be in Cincinnati playing the Bengals. Week 9 is going to follow up on that road trip. They're going to be in Carolina playing the Panthers. Week 10 versus the Washington Redskins. Week 11 in New York playing the Giants. Week 12 have San Francisco at home. The following week play the Carolina Panthers at home as well. And the following week after that, they're going to be home again playing the New Orleans Saints. That's going to be an interesting stretch of games. It's going to be games that are nice to watch, but it will definitely help us out that those three games are going to be at home. Because San Francisco, I'm a little worried about them next year. But wrapping up our regular season schedule, we've got Week 15. The Bucks will play in Baltimore against the Ravens. Week 16, they'll fly to Dallas again to play the Cowboys just like they did a couple of years ago. In Week 17, they'll round out the regular season by playing Atlanta at home. And uh, something interesting to note also is that Pittsburgh game in Week 3. It's going to be a Monday night football game, so expect some fireworks there. I'm already going to get my ticket. Um, I mean, I'm probably going to buy my ticket next week. I don't know if my girlfriend listens to the show or not, but we, uh, I mean, we're going to that game, man. As soon as I found out, as soon as I found out we were playing the Steelers, I knew we were going to that game. And uh, yeah. I told my boss today I would might I might need a day off for the day after because I'm not missing that game. And in case you guys don't know what we're talking about, Rhett's Rhett is obviously a Bucks fan, but Rhett's girlfriend is a big Steelers fan, so it's gonna be interesting to see. Um, you know, it's a big girl. time game. Yeah, it's gonna be a big time game. Monday night game. It's, it's gonna be a big one. <laughs> I've actually got um, I've actually got photo evidence. Uh, of her and Bucks, uh, Bucks gear, and I'm gonna hold that over her head that entire day. I'm, I'm probably gonna make a sign of like a picture I have of her in a Bucks jersey and a Bucks hat. I'm gonna hold it up next to her just to let everyone there know. Yeah, you know, yeah, and, and, then, and, and then the, and then the one game I was actually was wearing a Bucks shirt, so that's the only memory. <laughs> I had yeah, you got to game. see it in person. I'm glad you got <laughs> to see it in the flesh. All right, so we will break down our schedule a little bit more closer to the season prediction show uh, i mean luck of the draw the bucks do technically have the fourth toughest schedule in the league but you can't look at that and count us out immediately it's going to be tough but the bucks are a team that can surprise people and we've seen it before uh, i mean this is a team that can play so let's let's not count them out entirely let's worry about the schedule when we actually get to playing these games uh, but as for now let's just buckle up and prepare for the draft which is seven days away six days technically if you're listening to this because today's the 19th this episode will release on 420 bro um oh man oh man let's talk about some draft info we got evan i i heard you talking you've reminded me about it a couple of times now and i'm actually pretty excited to hear it but our very own evan has some insight on basically what the bucks are eyeing up for the nfl draft here in six days so what you got man yeah, well, I mean, obviously, the the draft is in six days. Um, I mean, we're recording this on Thursday night, so it's currently it is nine twelve. So nine twelve this time next <laughs> week, or we're gonna be we're gonna be at picks. Probably the Bucks are just gonna be about picking, pretty close to picking right about now. So I mean, it's definitely um, definitely that time of year. Uh, but anyways, I you know. I, do, I can say that they do like Derwin James um, at seven. Uh, um, they did bring in Derwin James for a visit, but uh, the only problem with that is that might turn the Bucks off of Derwin James is the fact that Derwin James refused a workout with the Buccaneers. Now, this doesn't mean that Derwin James doesn't want to play for the Buccaneers. Because Derwin James wants to play in the NFL, and you'll ask any prospect. They don't really care who they go to. Um, they're going to play where they're drafted. But, anyways, 
you know, it's a thing about staying healthy, and that might rub Jason Light the wrong way. Maybe Jason Light looked at that as, oh, wow, well, how committed is this guy, you know, this and that. But I still think they, they like throwing James quite a bit. Um, the other thing, they did bring in Saquon Barkley for a visit. Jason Light said that today. Uh, but what I've, from what I've gathered from a few people is that if Barkley is there, uh, they're going to pick him. Uh, if, if any of the big three is there, which is, I keep referring to it as the big three, um, Bradley Chubb, Quentin Nelson, and Saquon Barkley, if any of those guys are there, um, these, the, the, there's no possible way that two of them are going to be there. Right? It's going to be impossible that three, all three are there. So uh, um, if one of them are there, whether it's Chubb, Nelson, Barkley, they're the pick. But in the event that they are all three not there, I think the Bucks could be a real candidate for a trade down, and I think they're going to look at that. Uh, but if they can't trade down, if they stay at seven, I think they ultimately – uh, pick Darwin James. I know that they do like Minka Fitzpatrick, but I don't know if they like Minka Fitzpatrick in the top ten. Um, I know a lot of mocks have mocked Minka Fitzpatrick to the Buccaneers, and I mean it's 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 possible. I just don't see it happening at seven. Um, I do know that that they do like him though. Uh, Marcus Davenport, that, those kind of players, they're not going to be. The Bucks are not very high on Marcus Davenport. Um, at least not in the first round, where which is where he's going to be drafted. Uh, running back, other running backs, they love Nick Chubb, from what I'm hearing. Um, I think right now, if they don't pick Barkley in the first round, um, I think Nick Chubb's probably the favorite to, to be their pick in the second round, unless uh, Sony Michelle or Darius Geis, or unless one of those guys drops. So um, that's pretty much it for the running back position. Cornerback, they, they like Mike Hughes from uh, UCF, and they like Jair Alexander, Jair Alexander's guy. Um, who I really like too, and he could be available um, late first round if they were to trade back. Maybe early second round, but that's that's looking doubtful right now. So that's just a little bit of info that I have. Um, I'm going to be coming out with my Bucks mock draft, probably four rounds, maybe five, um, for you guys right here um, on the next episode of another uh, of a Can of Fire podcast. I almost said another sports podcast. Wow. Oh man, um, throwback. <laughs> <laughs> And um, so that'll be coming out. Uh, definitely, obviously, definitely gonna be before the draft. I'm not gonna, not gonna cheat and say, well, I probably predicted all these right. Look at this, and you look at the date as the day after the draft. Um, so yeah, that'll be coming out sometime next week. So be on a lookout for that, and I'll, have, I'll try to get as much information within the next week as I can on certain guys that are high on certain guys that are not. But uh, definitely, definitely buckle up. Alrighty, guys. Exciting things going on, and, and really quick, uh, just to address some of the points you had touched on, the Derwin James and and rejecting a private workout for the Bucks, kind of tailing off of something that you had mentioned previously, this isn't really something we should be worried about, right? Uh, I mean, this has happened before. Um, you had brought up Christian McCaffrey. He declined multiple workouts and still ended up being drafted top 10. Um it's not really going to hurt his draft stock at all. That's not what people are worried about. People are worried about if he wants to play in Tampa. And just to reiterate the point you had touched on, uh, no, we shouldn't really worry. Uh, things like this happen. And going back to what you had mentioned, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick, the the Bucks aren't super high on him. But I, I got to say, man, if the Bucks were in a position and they were to draft a guy like Minka Fitzpatrick – before any of the guys you had previously mentioned, um, any of the big three, just anyone available at that point, I, I don't know if I'd... Oh, man. Oh, wow. I, I just... I wouldn't be a huge fan of that. Um, I don't know. Well, I, I mean, wanted to they throw like my two Patrick. cents in on that one. <laughs> yeah, they do They do like Fitzpatrick. They, they like his versatility. They like his size. It's just that... Uh, um... I you just know, I, I don't person, like him better than Dur any of the other guys that we're looking at is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I have Derwin rated over him. Um, the honestly, the only player that I kind of be mad at at taking at at seven um, is Denzel Ward because I I would take I would take James or Fitzpatrick before I would take Ward. Um, I think Ward's going to be a good player. I just don't think that they should spend that high of a pick on a corner. I mean, I know they, they need corner. I'm not I'm not saying they don't. But with the depth at corner in this class, there's going to be some quality corners in the second round and late first round if you want to trade back in. I don't know how much value is there 
at picking one at seven. Same thing for Barkley. I'm not 100% sold that Barkley. I mean, I, I'm pretty confident that Barkley is the pick if he's there at seven, but I'm not 100% sold if it's the right pick because of how deep this running back class is. Um, there might be more value in taking a guy like Derwin James or making Fitzpatrick at seven um, and then and taking a running back like Nick Chubb in the second round then taking Barkley at seven. Um, and, and you but, could even... You know, you could Go even ahead. look at all the, the second round backs from last year. I mean, these are well rounded guys, and you're looking to find value, and this, this class is stacked, man. Oh, for sure. And I mean, you know, you know, Kamara, third round, you know, um, Kamara, third round, Kareem Hunt, second round. Uh, there, there's, you know, Dalvin Cook, second round. He shouldn't have been in the second round, but he was still a second round pick. Um, so, I mean, you know, it's definitely. You can find backs, you know, it's, I mean, it doesn't, it's not like you can find them on the street or anything, but you can find backs. It's, it's not impossible. And there, there's a, I like this running back class coming out of college. Now, not, not based on this on what this last class in the NFL. I would take this running back class over last year's any day of the week. I think that Saquon Barkley, if he was in last year's class, I think he'd be the best running back. Um, I think the Jaguars would have taken him instead of Leonard for math. Um, Imagine that, man. I, I just, I just think that Darius Geis in this class would be the, the second or third best running back. I just think it's a, it's a very, very good and deep class for running backs. And it's something we should be very excited about. We are only uh, less than a week away from the draft. Anything could really happen. And as you just mentioned, there's a couple of picks on the board. I'm excited to see what could happen, man, because a lot can happen in six days between now and the draft. And uh, something I had seen today was that both the number one and the Broncos pick at number five are, are pretty much up for sale. They're taking offers on them. And no, I'm not saying the Bucks should trade up. But depending on which team is able to get into that spot, we could see just a whole new scenario that we really weren't able to see before. Uh, again, depending on the teams that get in that spot. But the hype for the draft is real. We're getting to the exciting part of the offseason. We're getting to the tail end of the offseason. Um, I was just pretty much touching on anything can happen between now and the draft. And yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of exciting things anyone. coming up this next week, man. Yeah, they could pick anyone. Nobody's going to know until about 10 o'clock Thursday night who they picked in the first round. So Exactly. So let's get hype. Let's get excited. And really quick, before we jump into fan choice, something I did want to touch on uh, that you may or may not have heard about, linebacker Kendall Beckwith was injured in a car accident. I believe he was driving home from Louisiana or driving to... Um, he, was a, he was a passenger in the car. I'm not sure where they were going. They might have been driving home, but yeah, he was injured uh, in a car accident, yes. And and right now it is definitely an injury. He's going to miss OTAs. He's going to miss most of the off-season program. But Jason Light has come out and said that he's hopeful for a week one return. on jeopardy uh, In jeopardy of missing week one, but... It's not going to keep him sidelined the whole season. Uh, it does suck for a guy like him because he's really come into his own these past couple, uh, this past season even. He's solid depth at the linebacker position. I think he's a really, really good number three guy for what we have going on right there. Um, and something like this for him is, is really, really unfortunate because it also doesn't give him a chance to get on the field in the preseason and get back in the swing of things. I mean... You never know what could happen. Uh, we all assumed Jameis would be out for the rest of the year, and he wasn't. So let's see what happens, man. Uh, but Kendall Beckwith yeah. was injured, so uh, thoughts towards him, and best of luck in that recovery. Now, also, uh, Darius Glanton changed his name. He is now a Darius Taylor in other news. Yes, sir. <laughs> so a Darius Glanton is now a Darius Taylor. Let's jump in. Something hopefully you guys have been waiting for. I've been waiting for because I've been kind of excited for this segment. It is fan choice here for the 25th episode of the Cannon Fire Podcast. I wish I had some snappy music to play, uh, but I really didn't think about that until 30 seconds ago. And I, I don't think my computer is going to be fast enough to let me put in some music. Dun, 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 dun. I was thinking, like, the, the price is right. Dun, 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 dun. Um, okay, here we go. So we're going to break this down, and what's going to happen is... On the Instagram post that we had posted a couple of weeks ago, uh, we opened it up for everyone to leave a comment, and we'll discuss it on the show. 
Also gave us an outlet to get a little more ideas of what to talk about because news has been slow. But it's fan choice here for the 25th episode. And we are going to start things off. Taking a look, our first question comes from Matthew underscore QM. These are all people on Instagram. You can follow them as well. We kind of just touched on this, but I guess we'll jump into a little bit more detail. Uh, our secondary concerns, and if we do end up drafting secondary, who should we pick? Well, I mean, are we talking, I would assume we're talking in the first round here. I, I would, Yeah, I would assume first round. It doesn't clarify, but the most logical pick would be first round. I mean, what I would do, my plan would be, if you're, to, if you're, if you are sold on drafting a secondary player in the first round, I would pick Derwin James. Um, and I would, I mean, he's my fourth ranked prospect out of the whole draft. Um, I really like Derwin James's game. Uh, my, my, my top four is number one Barkley, two Nelson, three Chubb, four James. Um, but I mean, you know, I would pick. Derwin James, and then if you want to draft a corner in the fourth or fifth round, uh, I would go ahead and do that. I would also uh, bring a guy like Robert McLean back, uh, it, it back into the fold to help help out. I think that could be an option. Um, if they, I can't. If they pick Derwin James at seven, I really don't see them drafting a corner in, in the second round because I think they know they need a running back and even though this class is deep I mean I like I said they, they love Nick Chubb god they need a running back so bad I mean, needed a yeah they only have two on the years. roster right now oh. yeah I mean yeah I, mean, yeah, I can't argue um, <laughs> but um, I, I was trying to think of something to say and just couldn't um, you know it's I just don't think if they go running back, I think they might go secondary. It, it, it the first round will, will play off of the of the next seven rounds or the next six rounds, I should say. You know what they do in the first round, it's gonna do a you know a, a, a effect. It's gonna um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I can't think. Can't think, man. Uh, well, anyways, um, yeah. So if they draft Erwin James, I it, it would surprise me if they took a corner early. Um, but if they wouldn't go secondary in the first round, I would definitely think they're they're going secondary um, in the second round. So uh, there is a plan for the secondary, though. I, I can guarantee you that. And if if we're looking at who to draft hypothetically in the first round from the secondary, you've got a couple of guys whose names pop into your head. Um, Minka Fitzpatrick, Derwin James, Denzel Ward. I'm going to jump right on there with you and, and say that Derwin James is, is who I'm going to have to pick uh, to bring in a guy to safety position to complement – Obviously, it's probably, well, I don't know about obviously, but I'm expecting a little more rotational talent if they do bring in a safety uh, because you have a guy like Chris Conti just re-signed, flew under the radar. Justin Evans really coming into his own. But if you're going to have a guy like Derwin James and Justin Evans go out there and make plays, it would be so much cooler to see. Um, they compliment a lot. Like, oh, it's, yeah. It's a, it would be a very good fit for Derwin. Um, Derwin's oh, yeah. a... You know, Derwin's a guy who who can hit hard, um, who can hit hard, and isn't the the best at, at coverage. But that's what Justin Evans does. Yeah, Justin so Evans. Justin his, Evans can hit his, hard, but Derwin James is a good tackler. Evans is a good zone guy. That's that's their perfect free safety and strong safety tandem. And, and something to to look at when it comes to Justin Evans, if you look back and and just pay attention to the film and, and look at where he is on the field, he's one of those guys. His sideline to sideline reaction the way he can read a play even if he's way in the back of the field safety position look at the interceptions he had last year he made those plays happen and mm -hmm. if we're being honest here the couple of picks he had i don't know if a guy like derwin james can make happen but that's what you had mentioned was those two guys complimenting each other i i, I gotta pick derwin james uh, in that sense so so thank you um thank you matthew underscore qm for that question man I uh, appreciate it a lot. First one out of the gate. Next one's going to also discuss the the secondary idea, I, I guess. We'll cut to the chase. This is from Will underscore Neely. He says, will Denzel, uh, will Denzel Ward be another Vernon Hargraves? And in a sense, I, I think he means, will Denzel, will Denzel Ward have longevity in the league? Well, I mean, I, I think I know why he's saying that. I think he's saying it because they are similar size, similar size and weight. Um, 
I don't believe so. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't like the Hargraves pick when it was made. Um, I didn't think really think that Vern Hargraves was was going to turn out to be uh, your number one corner. And as it's looking now, he's that the best he's going to do. I think is probably your number two corner, and that's that's wishful thinking. So I mean, I I think Denzel Ward is going to be a a high end number two corner. You want to know something really uh, funny? I hate to interrupt you, but. I, I just put the pieces together in my head, and it was really funny. The name of the last episode was Wishful Thinking, and the topic that we were giving Wishful Thinking for was Vernon Hargraves. He was the uh, the cover star of the last episode. I just I put two and two together, and it was really, really funny to me. All right, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I love the side conversation. <laughs> um, anyways, um, yeah, I mean, I think Denzel Ward is going to be a, a high-end number two corner. Um I, I may be a low tier number one corner. I don't think he's a true shutdown corner. I don't think there's any true shutdown corners in this class. I think there are a lot of guys that are going to be high end uh, number twos slash you know just solid number twos. Um, there, there's nobody really that stands out to me as a number one corner. Uh, but I mean, my favorite corner is, is Jair Alexander from from Louisville. Um, so if I had to pick a corner, it'd be it'd be him. Um, but I mean, Denzel Ward, I think he's going to be a good player. I just don't think that the Bucks should should be taking him. Not, And, I mean, I'm not saying that because, you know, he is a similar size to Hargraves. You know, the, the Bucks like small small corners. Uh, that's how their, their scheme runs. That's how it works. Um, you know, so, you know, it's it's not so much as I wouldn't pick him because he resembles Vernon Hargraves. That I wouldn't pick him because I, I feel like there's just so much depth at cornerback. Um and I do think that Vernon Hargraves is going to be better. And when you kind of look at that, uh, going back to the point we had just made, when it comes to players complementing each other, you look at Denzel Ward, he comes in pretty much the same measurables as every other corner on the team. It's great to come in and, and add depth with talented guys, but you know when you pick a guy like Denzel Ward – it is essentially killing two birds with one stone because you're bringing in fresh talent, and as we mentioned before, you're bringing in a guy who can complement the player across from him, and I don't know if a guy like Denzel Ward can come in and do that at the position uh, that he's in, but, I mean, maybe that's a maybe that's a way to look at it as well. Uh, but thank you for I the mean, question. Uh, and Sorry, it's, that mental, it's that mentality thing. I love Derwin James' mentality. That, he's that nasty. dog, you know, that, that Quan Alexander... Uh, that Quan Alexander mentality, you know, that, you know, um, that, you know, Levante David, uh, um, you know, Dura, Dura, I almost said Derwin James, Jameis Winston, uh, Mike Evans, those type of guys. I, I love that, that I'm going to, I'm going to fight hard. I'm going to be nasty. I'm going to want to win. I'm going to, you know, um, I just, I love that. And I think he could really bring uh, energy to the defense. And it's, it's something you can get behind and get excited about as well. So thank you, Will Neely, for, the question, man, appreciate it a lot. Moving on, all of these underscores, I'm pretty sure every question we have, uh, <laughs> the username has an underscore, and I kind of have to say it because, you know. And then my personal account has an underscore on it. Man, what's going on? <laughs> all right. So let's jump into our next question here. Moving over to the offensive side of the ball, our question is from underscore Tyler Wilbur underscore. There are two in that name. And the next couple of questions we have have up to three, if you can believe that. All right. So underscore Tyler Wilbur underscore asks, should the Bucks give Peyton Barber a legitimate chance to start, and what do you think Jameis's contract extension will be like? Well, we have seen that just recently. Um, but taking a look at Peyton Barber and the position he's in at running back, I I'm not expecting them to 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 throw him to the Wolves week one. I don't think he's going to be the definite starter. In the sense that you're asking, uh, it is a question on Instagram, so I'm not entirely sure of the context you're putting him in. Uh, but I think it's going to be more of the same of what we've seen, the rotational talent, guys coming in and out, guys getting multiple reps. We, we almost run off of a two-running back system. Um, you know, you have certain backs for certain things. If we pick up a guy like Nick Chubb in the second round, I wouldn't expect to see a lot of Peyton Barber, or I, I wouldn't expect to see as much of Peyton Barber as I would Nick Chubb. But I really think it just comes down to, to how we draft and who we draft. You know, if we end up getting uh, a big name back who comes in and say hypothetically we get Saquon Barkley 
and he comes in week one. I would almost expect Peyton Barber to fill the role of Charles Sims and just be our third down back to give Saquon a rest on reps. I mean, I'm expecting the rotational situation, but anything really could happen. Um, all in all, I'm not really expecting a lot from Peyton Barber this season. Uh, Evan, how do you feel? Well, I mean, I think that it would be a big, it would be a big step for Peyton Barber to, to start. Um, I, I like what Peyton Barber did last year. I, I'm a fan of Peyton Barber. I like his his toughness, um, but I think he's going to remain the the short yardage back for this team. I don't think. Um, although Nick Chubb, you know, if Nick Chubb plays very similar to Peyton Barber, except Nick Chubb has a a bit more speed than Barber does. Um, so. I mean, he could use that speed a bit more, maybe with that power and speed, Nick Chubb. Um, but, I mean, yeah, if they would draft the guy like Saquon Barkley um, or Darius Geis, I think those guys would be the, the main guys on downs one and two. And, and honestly, if it's Barkley, probably around uh, down three, too, uh, just because he's just such a natural pass catcher. Um, and I think that Barber could use some work there. Uh, I think um, I do think they draft two running backs in this class. Um, I think they'll draft a running back that complements the other one. It's it's gonna be all about complimenting each other, um, and not the you know, hey, you're doing a great job. Not that, um, <laughs> yeah, you know, you ever, we're, we're, we're ever, not running um, the, the peewee football league here. Have you ever seen that episode of South Park with Sarcasta Ball one? I, I you know I recognize the name, but I, oh, I'm not. Dude, sure. it's so funny. It, it's basically just it, it's a wave of sarcasm that that takes over everybody, and it's kind of in in response to the NFL and all the rule changes, making it a softer league. And it just, you got to watch it. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty funny. But the joke I'm referring to is that there's a segment in the show where they change the rules where all the football players have to go hug each other and, like, say good, nice things to each other. And that's just that's what I thought of. <laughs> so, a, so a classic show. Oh, yeah. Um, well, anyways, I mean, uh, um, yeah, it's, you know, they're gonna if they draft a guy with speed, they're gonna look to draft another guy with power. If they draft a guy with power, they're gonna look to draft another guy with speed. There, there, there's a plan there. They they want to put certain guys in on first and second down, put a certain guy on third, third down, put a certain guy in when you're on your you know your own you know when you're on goal line, um, put a certain guy in when you're at the fifty. It's it's all certain situations that, and they plan for those and they have guys they like for each situation. So definitely gonna be interesting to see Peyton Barber. It's not like he's now he's not gonna disappear. He's still gonna get touches, but. I mean, I don't think he's going to enter the number week one in New Orleans. I don't think he's going to be the starter. Okay. All right. Okay. Let me bring up the list of questions here. I had it, and then my phone turned off. Um, on to our next question, and this is going to be the final batch of questions. We've only got a couple of more, and then we will wrap things up here. But this one is from Ben. Here come the underscores. Ben underscore Leopold underscore 18. So Ben Leopold asks, he's got two questions here. Actually, he's going to wrap up our segment. First question is going to be, what happened to Keith Tandy? Has he regressed? Towards the end of the previous 9-7 to season, he seemed like a promising safety for our team. Almost kind of came back, if you think about it. Uh, it almost seems unlikely at this point that he'll start this next season. What do you see for, for Keith Tandy? Well, I, I mean, it, it's an unfortunate event with Keith Tandy, um, in, in my opinion. I think it's um, just hasn't been given the opportunity he needs. Um, but do I think he's a full-time starter on this team? No. Um, I do think he's better than Chris Conti, but, I, you know, he's not better than Justin Evans. Um, so, I mean, it, 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 it's a tough situation with Tandy. You wish he'd get more snaps, but at the same time, you know, Evans is better. Um, you know, certain guys are, are better in certain situations. Um, I mean, yeah, if they draft Erwin James, they re-sign Tandy, but if they draft Erwin James, I you know, I doubt Tandy sees much of the field. I like Tandy, but, you know, the truth is nobody really realizes that he was a rookie in 2013. This is his fifth season, going on sixth season in the NFL. He's going to be 20, I believe he's 28 now, going to be turned 29. So I think Chris um, Conti is a year older than him. I believe they're about the same age. I believe Chris Conti is is very similar to age, either twenty eight or twenty nine. One of those. Okay. Uh, May, might be in his. I don't think he's in his thirties yet. Um. So, I mean, it, it's a tough break for Tandy. And like I said, I like him, but it's just 
just hasn't worked out, and it, it may never work out. Because, you know, he's probably towards the end of his prime, I guess you could say. Um, he had that great run, and he was the reason they went 9-7. I mean, big interceptions in San Diego finished, and New Orleans. two games, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it, honestly, if, if he doesn't make those picks and they go, you know, they would have gone 7-9 uh, and nine, said 9-7, nine and that, that might have... Um, might have been bad for Dirk Cutter. That that's what I was gonna say. That that wouldn't have looked better. I mean, seven and nine, then five and eleven. I don't know if Dirk Cutter stays. Um, so I mean, we'll you know, obviously you don't know. So I'm not gonna sit here and really talk much about that. But um, you know, it, it's a tough break. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, and and a guy like Keith Tandy, as you mentioned, his rookie year was 2013. So if you've been following Bucks football for that long. He's a name that has come up, not necessarily in, in huge plays. He did finish those two games. But as previously mentioned, man, those two games, uh, two big finishes against L.A. and New Orleans, I, I kind of thought that was when he was going to get his chance and he was going to come out and, and show us more than what we had seen the past couple of seasons. And since then, it's just been not that much. Last season... Had his name called a couple of times, but I don't think he finished with uh, with mind blowing stats. Uh, I mean, no, I, I'm pretty sure I don't think he had an interception. I, I don't think so. Um, and you look at a guy in like 2013, in 2013, he was actually quite productive. Um, in 2013, he had a decent rookie season, uh, but then after that, just never really got the chance with Lovey. Kind of got the chance with Dirk Cutter, but then you know just tailed off. And I, I think the the unfortunate truth with Keith Tandy is just kind of shows you the nature of the league. You've got talented guys, but, you know, unfortunately, the NFL is not always fair, and it just it, it kind of sucks. But, I mean, here's to the best for Keith Tandy. He's a talented guy. I hope he sticks around, and I hope he does something positive um, to at least set the tone for the rest of his career. He's kind of guy who can play in the league for a long time, whether it's his backup or – Whatever it is, he, he's gonna be a he's gonna be an assistant coach someday. He's, yeah. he's gonna be some some kind of coach. He he has a great knowledge for the game. Absolutely great knowledge. He's a great person too. Um, he's gonna he's gonna have he has a future uh, in some level of coaching. So here's the best for Keith Tandy. Uh, we'll see what happens here on out. But this is going to be our final question. It is also from Ben Leopold eighteen. You can follow him on Instagram and everyone else we have mentioned before on Instagram. If you're one of the fancy kids who has one of those. So here we go. Our final question and something I'm really excited to talk about. Something we haven't touched on at all. Do you see Jameis getting better this year with less careless mistakes? We must assume his deep ball accuracy will improve, right? Now, let me just come out and say, I'm going to toss it over to you in a second. I I just want to say... I think this is the year Jameis breaks 30 touchdowns. I don't want to put all my chips in one pile, but I really, really, really want to say this is the year that Jameis breaks 30 touchdowns. I think this is the year that he's going to get it right. I think this is going to be the year that he balls out and we do great things. But how are you feeling on Jameis this year? Well, are we talking 30 passing touchdowns or 30 touchdowns total? Um, I guess 30 passing touchdowns. Okay, because he's already done 30 touchdowns total. He did that in 2016, I believe. Um, so I, yeah, I mean, 30 passing TDs, sorry. Okay, there you go. Uh, I mean, I, I think so. I think his decision-making has improved. Um, that Saints game, you know, that last game, there were some mistakes oh, there. Oh, God, but what was it, I, three or four started. picks? A three. Um, there was there was two two that were really bad. One that was he just tried to squeeze it in. That wasn't you know it wasn't a bad decision, but you know he just tried to squeeze it in. Two were well. One was a really bad decision. Um, the other one was just inaccuracy. Um, uh, he made the right throw, just not accurate. Um, anyways, I think you know he showed when he came back he was making the smart decisions. Um, and I think with better offensive line play, which is expect is expected. Um, signing Ryan Jensen, moving Ali Moore Pitt back to guard. I mean, the offensive line to me is already upgraded. Um, so, I mean, I think that I think that he's going to be better. Um, I'm not sure if he eclipses 30 touchdowns. 
Um, but I think the biggest thing is the the running game. The running game has to it has to come up. It, it has to. Um, they got to find a running game. Jameis had success as rookie season. Why? Okay, yeah, he was talented as a rookie. I'm not gonna you know he's a good player. He still is a good player. Um, but I mean, he had Doug Martin who rushed for over a thousand yards, and Charles Sims who gained over a thousand yards from scrimmage. That helps so much because that sets up play act. And that sets up, you know, when you're doing shotgun, whether you pass it out to Sims, who's a dangerous threat. And the Bucks haven't had that the past two seasons. And, I mean, I think that Jameis Winston, everybody says his worst season was last season. I do not think so. His worst season was 2016. That, to me, was his worst season. Um, I think that there was a stretch really when they were on that five-game win streak almost. That was that was bad. Um I did not think Jameis Winston was that played that good during that five game stretch. The defense really helped him out, um, and you know, I think that in 2017 he played very well um, before injury. You know, then the injury happened in Arizona, maybe even in the Giants game. I've heard, um, and then he started to slow down. But then he came back. Green Bay he played all right. Um, Detroit he played all right. And then. Falcons, he played fantastic. Versus the Panthers, he played fantastic. And the Saints, he was eh. But, I mean, you know, he's still... I think he, he's going to be better. But they, they need to get a running game. They, they have to. I mean, if, if they don't, he's not going to get better. Um, now, because a, a player like him, he's his stats show that he is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, in the NFL, coming off play action. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I, I remember seeing that for the first time, and I, I really had to think about it, and I was like, no way. And I know for a stretch of time, he was the number one quarterback out of play action in the league, but kind of jumping back to Ben's question, he had also addressed Jameis's deep ball issues, and let's look at it this way. Deshaun Jackson was brought in last year, wasn't utilized the greatest, had a, had a decent year, but definitely not anything that's going to stick out on his resume. He's coming into his second year with the Bucks. He's getting a feel for things. They have the entire offseason to work together and figure things out, and it seems like they're doing an okay job so far. If you have a guy like Deshaun Jackson coming into year, what is it, his 11th season, I believe? Yes, sir. He is still very capable of making plays. and He's still one of the fastest players in the NFL. When you have him at 100% downfield, you're damn right that's going to help your passing accuracy because he is going to find a way to make it happen. Now, I'm not saying... I'm not saying he's going to have to do everything, but these guys are going to find a way to work in the offseason and produce down the field that we really didn't see a whole lot of last year or the year before. And I'm really excited to see it because it's almost like I don't want to count all my chickens before we hatch here because we almost said the same thing last year. But it's almost like we get to see the Deshaun Jackson we should have seen last year. We get to see him. Yeah. At his full potential. He's comfortable where he is. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think there's going to be some bombs to Deshaun Jackson this year. Yeah. And I'm um, very, very excited about it. I'm so excited. Chris Godwin as well. I don't know how well oh, he yeah. is on the deep ball, but Chris Godwin, Mike Evans, and Deshaun Jackson. Oh, I'm so excited. Adam Humphreys, Cameron Braid, O.J. Howard, you know, just, just you know, they need it. What do they need? They need a running back. See, it all comes back to their running back. If they get a running back, if they get uh, – I'm okay, I'm not really – uh, sold on the Saquon Barkley pick at seven. If they get a, if they get Saquon Barkley, that I don't see a way you stop that offense. I, I, I know we, I know we said that. Um, I, I know we said that last year. Uh, you know, oh, OJ Howard, and you got Mike Evans, Cameron Ray. How you got to cover all these guys? They still didn't have a running back. Uh, if they get Saquon Barkley, I, I don't know how you're going to be able to cover um, all these guys. Plus, defend the run. I, I, I don't know. I, I really <laughs> don't know how you're going to be able to do it. Um, I mean, even if they get somebody, you know, Quentin Nelson, and they they get a guy like Nick Chubb or Sony Michelle, I think it's going to be the same thing. It's it's still going to be, especially when you look at all the moves they made on the line this season, setting up different scenarios, guys coming into different spots. It sounds intimidating, uh, especially for Ali Marpet, I believe he is a he's a natural he's a natural right guard, and they have him playing left, or is it the other way around? Natural right, playing left. I uh, played a bit of left at Hobart, though. He did play a little bit of left. 
I, I did see him come out recently and say it has been a bit of a challenge stepping into the role. But when you're a guard, and I mean, from personal experience, all throughout high school, I was an offensive lineman. I played center most of the time. But when I got the chance to play guard and tackle, when you get into that position and then you just jump sides... It's a little bit harder to adjust, especially when it comes to your first step, and you got to realize, okay, it's a pass play, it's a run play. I got to know who, all, all of that stuff that comes into football. It's a little bit easier to get a hold of, you know. Snapping the ball and preparing to block, I gotta say, can can pretty much just set you up for anything. I think if you can play center, you can play damn near anything on that offensive line. I don't think Ali Marpet was too shabby of a center. No, he was not a bad center, but he was just a better guard, and I think he's going to be. Um, but the only thing is, though, if if they do draft Quentin Nelson, I expect them to move Ali Marpet to right guard. Um, I, I do think that they, they end up moving Ali Marpet to right guard, have Quentin Nelson play left guard, and that is a top 10 offensive line. I'm going to say it right now, that might be even a top 5 offensive line. You add Quentin Nelson that mix with Ryan Denson, Ali Marpet, Lamar Dotson, Donovan Smith. You, you do that, yeah. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, man, I'm I'm getting excited just thinking about it. And, and guys, this is all stuff that we're gonna have the chance to actually watch in six days in the NFL draft. I am, oh, I'm so excited for the draft, man. We are gonna been be waiting, doing something special. Been waiting, definitely yeah, waiting four months, three months. Yeah, I know. That's crazy. That's crazy. I mean, we're gonna have something for the draft though. We're 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 gonna have an episode for the draft. Oh yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna jump into that. We're gonna do an episode before the draft, but when it comes to the draft, I, I really don't think I'm gonna go to any draft parties. Um, I, I thought about going to the Bucks Uncensored draft party, but uh, 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 but I, I don't think I'm gonna be doing anything. So if you're not going to be doing anything, maybe we could figure out something live we could do. It would be something. Something kind of cool. I don't know. Just toss some ideas around. We'll talk about it more after the show. But it's been a great show. Thank you guys for an incredible first year as we get ready to enter our second year here on the Cannon Fire Podcast. And it's it's been awesome. Thank you guys so much. 25 episodes. This one is fan choice. And that's just about going to do it for this episode of the Cannon Fire Podcast here on YouTube and iTunes. Uh, again, just wanted to say thank you guys so much. It's been uh, a kick-ass first year. It's It hasn't felt like a year. We've seen the ups and the downs of this team so far. And really, things can only get better from here. Um, so thank you, everyone, for the support. Thank you, everyone, who, who goes on YouTube and leaves comments. Thank you guys so much. That stuff does not go unnoticed, and it means the world. Thank you to everyone who left a review on iTunes. We are now a five-star rated podcast. And... We have over 100 subscribers. If you want to help us out a little bit more, go over to Instagram and follow us at Cannon Fire Podcast. You can also find Mr. Evan at Bucks Football. Help him get to damn near 20,000 followers, man. Good God. I, I know you got a couple thousand left to go, but getting there. <laughs> getting there. And if the Bucks do as well as we think they will next year, then we'll see what happens. Also. Yeah. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we'll see. We we will see. I mean, yeah, the success of the team always helps out the page. I mean, during that five game win streak, dude, I was amazed. I was amazed at how many <laughs> followers I got. I I really was. People get to jump on the hype train, man. That's what happens. That's what happens. Yeah. But also, if you guys want to go show some love to our partners at Pewter Report, you can check them out at pewterreport.com. They're also on Instagram and Facebook, I believe, as well. I think on Facebook. I know they're on Instagram at Pewter Report. You can go check them out, give them some love. And big shout out, a lot of good stories going out lately. I had just seen Trevor's latest cover three, the one about the, um, he had pretty much had the tagline, it was the most realistic draft, simu uh, draft scenarios, and basically how those players could could uh, help out the team. So go check it out, Trevor Sikama's draft, or cover three, God, cover three on the NFL draft coming up here soon. But, yeah, guys, that's just about going to do it for this episode of the Cannon Fire Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. We will catch you guys next time. Remember, and I mean, we play these guys in the first three weeks of the season, but remember the Eagles suck and the Bucks do not. We will see you guys next time. <laughs>